Berjaya Corporate Berhad was founded by Vincent Tan Chi Yun in 1984. The company is in a multi-industry company, which is what we call it as conglomerate. Uh, they are involving in the consumer marketing and retail industry, property industry, hotel, resort and recreation industry, gaming and lottery management industry, financial services, F&B industry, motor trading and distribution, environmental services and education. And they sell products like personal and healthcare products, organic products and services like food, books, property developments, renting out hotels, entertainment services like Toto, insurance, unit trust and stockbroking services, food chain restaurant like Kenny Rogers Roasters, trading and fixing cars, green technology, for example like water treatment and managed waste, and many other businesses. The countries that the company have presence are, there's a lot, <laughs> there are a lot of countries that the company have presence, but here is the rough idea of all of the country, you can just have a look at the picture. For more information, you can check out their website at www.bajaya.com. Hey guys, this is John. I'm not an analyst. Welcome back to my channel. You may be wondering why I am covering Bajaya Corporation for today's video. Well, there's three reasons actually. One being a request from one of my viewers. So if you guys have any company that you want me to analyze, make sure to comment down below. Second reason is if you look at this share price chart, uh, Bajaya Corporation had rallied up quite tremendously about 155% growth in just a span of one month. This had essentially caught a lot of retail investors' attention, which comes to my third reason. I think this is a great opportunity for me to share about my viewpoint on companies that have many different industries in their business portfolio, or what we call it as conglomerate, and why you as an investor should be wary when investing in such business model. By the way, for those who are unaware, I'm a believer of value investing. Now, that does not mean that you should invest and hold companies for a very long time. That has actually nothing to do with value investing. What I'm trying to convey is, as a value investor, I'm looking for companies that have a convincing story, that has potential growth in the future, a healthy financial performance, basically generating sustainable and growing revenue, profit and cash flow, and last but not forgotten, buying the company at an attractive valuation. If you like me to talk more about what should a value investor do when evaluating companies, you can drop a comment down below. You can just like comment value invest and I'll post a video about it in the future. Without further talking, let's get right into the content. So the first slide is what I would usually show the top 10 shareholdings of the company. I won't be commenting much about it so you can just pause the video if you want to read it. Coming to Bajaya's revenue and gross profit, at first glance, the revenue growth has been rather bumpy. Its gross profit was also flat because they don't have the ability to increase their selling price because of stiff competition. For example, its Causeway business segment's margin drop is due to the aggressive promotional activities they implemented to clear off their unsold inventory. And of course, during financial year end 2019, both revenue and gross profit dropped progressively due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Next, it is the operating profit. This one is no better than its gross profit. You can see that there are times the operating profit drop is because of their fixed cost is always growing higher than the growth of their sales. And the times where they managed to secure high operating profit is because they did some disposal of their assets. Yes, you hear it right. They make more profit by selling their asset than making money via those assets which suggests that the businesses that they acquire may not be performing well financially. Now let's take a look at its GPM, OPM and NPM. As you can see, the growth of gross profit margin has been reducing progressively over the years. Similar to its operating profit margin and net profit margin, if you notice during financial year end 2015, they managed to achieve the best record, but it was actually due to the one-off gain from the remeasurement of equity in Bauto and B Starbucks amounting to 1 billion ringgit. After financial end 2015, both uh, OPM and NPM start to decline. And not to mention, there were loss incurred in its net profit margin during financial year end 2016, 2018, as well as 2020. 
for its remuneration to profit after tax, I don't really like their distribution of remuneration or how much the director is paying themselves. Judging from its profit after tax performance, you can see that the growth is rather unstable despite the remuneration has been on the rise. It is a red flag to me when I see companies that only focus on their own pay rather than taking good care of their company's business. Looking at its total debt to cash, I can understand why they are taking a lot of debt. The main reason is because their current business model is acquiring companies and land for its property development businesses. But even so, I don't quite like the fact that they are overgearing themselves because, as you can tell in the previous slide, its revenue and profit has not been performing well even with those assets. The only thing that I can comment on Bajaya is that their operating cash flow has been healthy over the past 10 years. By healthy, I mean they have been in a positive, although the growth has been dropping since financial year end 2016. Like I said, Bajaya Corporation's current business model is just plucking different companies and lands, and if let's say they didn't work out, the company would then dispose. This can be justified from its disposal of assets from financial year end 2016 to 2020. In terms of dividend distribution, I would say it's alright from the start, but after financial end 2016, I don't know what's the reason but the company actually stopped distributing dividends. Usually when companies that are not growing aggressively, I expect them to focus on distributing more dividends to retain the shareholders. However, this does not seem like the case for Bajaya Corporation, so this is something that you want to take note of. Finally, we have its free cash flow to dividend. If you just look at the chart, it looks very healthy, but in reality, the reason why the free cash flow grew so much since financial year end 2016 is because they have been disposing a lot of assets which granted them a one-off gain, thus making its free cash flow looks as though it is growing. Just take note that their free cash flow growth has nothing to do with its operating cash flow performance. How they pay their dividends to its shareholders during financial year end 2012 to 2015, as stated on the slide, it is most likely via its retained earnings or maybe even loan. Overall, I rate their company 3.5 out of 8, which is about 43.75%. Uh, based on its 10 years financial performance, it is not a great company in my humble opinion. Now I will be sharing my personal opinion on why you as an investor should be wary when investing in Bajaya corporations or companies that are in a conglomerate industry. Before that, I want to clarify that I don't see any positive catalyst when it comes to the share price rally for Bajaya Corp. The only information we have is just that the change of CEO, which basically they appointed Encik Abdul Jalil Abdul Rashid. Hence, I feel that the public is... I think they are overreacting about this news. I would only see this as a positive catalyst if let's say Anche Abdul Jalil have the expertise and ability to lead and improve Bajaya's business in the coming few quarters or even years. Just like what Datuk Karim did for K-Power and SCIB during 2019. Okay, I have mentioned the term conglomerate. So to benefit those who don't know what it means, it's basically a combination of a few individual companies operating in different industry, for example like plantation, retail, oil and gas, etc. under one corporate group. And it's usually involving a parent company and many subsidiaries. In the case for Bajaya Corporation, you can see that how they generate revenue are from different business entities. About 30% of the revenue are coming from the motor trading and distribution. 38% are from the gaming lottery management. Some are from the retail and food and beverage industries and other businesses. You may be wondering, their company is pretty diversified, right? Which means they are risk adverse. However, sometimes this kind of business model can only do harm to the company's growth. And this is what we call diversification, which the term was coined by Peter Leach in his book, One Up Wall Street. According to Investopedia, diversification is the process of investing in too many assets with similar correlation, which results in an averaging effect. It occurs when an investor or company adds investments to a portfolio in such a way that the risk to return trade-off is worsened. In simpler terms, too much of diversification can lead to little to no growth or even worse, more problems to the company. And that is the case I see in Bajaya Corporation. And it can be further justified in its share price performance for the past 10 years. As you can see, 
Berjaya Corporation share price had peaked at the 23rd of April 2010 and it has been falling profusely over the years. Imagine that if you bought them during 2010 and held it for let's say 5 years and you convince yourself that the share price will rebound back but in reality it didn't. So this is what happens when investors invest in companies that they don't fully understand. And not only Berjaya Corporation, other companies like Ball Steed, Syme Dhabi, IJM, YTL, FGV, UMW and MMC are some of the examples that are in the conglomerate industry and are having little to no growth. Hence, I would like to conclude the importance of understanding a company's business model and industry, basically the fundamental aspects before investing your hard-earned money into them. And to remind you guys that companies that are jack of all trades are in fact master of none. Thank you for staying till the end. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you did, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button for more analysis like this. I appreciate each and every one of you who do so. And with that said, I'll see you on the next one.